My next guest is a relationship coach and is the co-author of Relovenship, Look Within to Love Again. Joining us via Skype is Mario Cloutier. Welcome, Mario. How are you? Good to see you, Eraldo. Thank you very much for oh. having me. Oh, no problem. Thanks for being on the show. I appreciate it. All right, let's get to right to it. Um, what can a person avoid by making some of the common mistakes about dating? Well, when I hear that, uh, when, when a person asks me that kind of question, my first reaction is always to say, congratulations, because if you have made that realization, uh, you've probably done half of the work already. And it's not a hard, it's not an easy thing to do, you know, take a look at yourself and, and realize that you need, need to make some change in your life. The, the next step for such a person, we always advise, you know, go back to your previous relationship and look at your own behavior. It's always easy to look externally, but look at your own behavior in the relationship and what is it that uh, you do or keep doing that seem to attract the same mistakes, so to speak. And, and once you do that, what we say is that you've truly engaged on the path to recovery. Hmm. And what tips can you offer to people who fear being rejected? Now, I know I've been, in my youth, I used to be rejected a bunch of times, but anyway, but what, what tips can you offer to people? Yeah, fear is a big one. We could talk about it for hours. It comes in different shapes and forms. Uh, whether you're afraid of being rejected or uh, you're afraid of being hurt, what's key to understand is that fear is only an illusion and it needs to be faced head on. You can't uh, hide away from, from fear. So how do you do that? Well, you do that by going within yourself, reestablish a foundation of self-respect and get to know who you are. Uh, we, we created a tool that we call the GBVP system uh, where we teach people to make lists of all your gratitudes, beliefs, values, and priorities. And, and when we do that, what happens is that we truly look at what matters to us in our lives. And that's what makes us unique. And that's what establishes our self-worth. And from that point on, we say that our self-worth will ultimately multiply our love worth. Hmm. So how can you tell that the person you're dating is the one? I mean... I met my wife, believe it or not, in my backyard. At the moment I saw her, I knew she was the You're one. Lucky. So I, and lucky, right? So <laughs> I know you had a very similar story, but you know, what tips can you offer for that? Well, the, the first thing is that uh, if you don't have clarity on what you want, this could be very hard to tell if you're dating the right person. So we preach that clarity is power. And, and one way to have clarity in your life is to have what we call personal laws. So those are non-breakable, non-negotiable rules that you set for yourself ahead of time prior to starting dating again so that it helps you stay on course and will make sure that you won't settle or compromise for, for anything less than what you want to have in your life. I'll give you a personal example. Mm -hmm. um, when I decided to move on, I had established many personal laws for, my, for myself. But the one that was at the very top of my list was that I wanted to have someone in my life that shared the same faith as I had because I had been in a marriage with an atheist and it brought all kinds of challenges to the relationship. So by having that type of personal laws in your life, it helps bring clarity and it will make sure that you'll stay on course and you won't compromise for anything less than what you intend to attract. Mm. So, what, so what do you think of love at first sight? I know my love was at first sight. What, what do you think of it? You know, we can't do without, uh, it seems like we, we see that uh, everywhere. What we ask people to, to ask themselves when that happens is that, uh, what's your intention? What do you want that relationship to be? Is it a short-term thing or is it a long-term thing? If it's a long-term thing, we encourage people to go back to the list of criteria that they have established for the ideal relationship that uh, they want to have in their lives. Now, if you don't have that list, it's not too late, you know, take the time to step back, go back and reestablish that list because ultimately what you want to do, you want to benchmark that new flame of yours against that list of criteria to make sure that he or she fits the mold and that you don't get blinded by your emotions or, or your physical attraction. Mm. So why is it harder once you've been, you know, heartbroken or something to find life? Why, why is that so much harder to do? Well, I think it's, uh, it's perfectly normal, Eraldo, because uh, we know how painful breakups can be. Uh, what we find a lot is that uh, many of us, we get stuck in our past. So, uh, you know, we, we like to play what we call the blaming game. 
We blame ourselves a lot. We blame the others. We blame the circumstances for whatever happened in our lives. And it's kind of normal. But we say, if you want to move on, you need to get to a place of forgiveness. Right. So you need to f truly forgive yourself uh, and forgive the other for whatever, whatever happened. It's not an easy thing to do. But by forgiving yourself, you give yourself permission to love again. And that's why we say forgiveness is your free pass to love. All right. Well, Mario, thank you so much for being on the show. We're out of time. I wish we had that more time, but I appreciate you being on the show. Thank you so much. Thank you very much, Geraldo. Take care. All right, and still to come, the law of attraction. We use it in our everyday life and don't even know it. Well, how or what causes it? Find out after the break.